After an airstrike on the drama theater in Mariupol, survivors came out of the shelter under the rubble. Italy is ready to rebuild the destroyed drama theater, and Greece is willing to rebuild the maternity hospital, which also had been bombed by the Russian troops just before. However, the lives of more than 2,000 peaceful Mariupol citizens who were killed because of Russian attacks can never be regained. Russian army carries out an air raid against Ukraine from airdromes in Belarus, Russia and occupied Crimea. This is UA, the day that we survived. Ukrainian journalists have come together to create it with real people who recall themselves and send us their stories. The occupiers are bombing Kyiv again and again. Honored artist of Ukraine Oksana Schweitz was killed during the shelling of a residential building in the capital. In the early morning of the 18th of March, the Russians fired six cruise missiles across Lviv. More than 700 buildings have already been destroyed by occupants in Kharkiv alone. It is the 27th day of Russia's war against free Ukraine. We started to receive the messages about the deaths of our closest ones. Meanwhile, Russians complain about Russian hate in social media. The Seimers of Lithuania and Latvia, following Estonia, are calling for the closure of the sky over Ukraine. The countries are expelling Russian diplomats from their territories for undermining national security and spreading propaganda. Lithuania calls on Russia to return to the framework of international law to stop the bloody war and the suffering of the people, to withdraw the army that occupied the land from all over Ukraine, the ministry said. Representatives of Russia and Belarus have been banned from entering the European Parliament because there is no place in the House of Democracy for those who seek to destroy the democratic order, as European Parliament President Roberto Mezzola stated. At the same time, Chancellor of Germany Olaf Scholz stated that it is unacceptable to insult people from Russia because Russia's war against Ukraine is Putin's war and only he is responsible for it. The capital of Ukraine is shelled every day. Residential buildings, neighborhoods, shopping malls are under constant fire. Serhii tells us about life in Kyiv. The curfew continues from 8 p.m. to 7 a.m. Moving by car has its difficulties. Only two bridges in the city are functioning, Darnitsky and Pivnichny. There are huge traffic jams because of this. It takes at least an hour to get to the other bank of the river. You can get gas at some places in the city, but to refuel the car means standing in line for a long time. Grocery stores are open, the choice is limited, but there is everything you need. Dozens of people line up at the pharmacies. In wartime the community has come together. People have united like never before. Those who have transport try to rescue others, help them take people and pets out of hot spots to a safer place for free. Residents of apartment blocks have become more attentive and report suspicious objects to the authorities. The post offices are working, but not as well as we would like. Many branches are simply closed. So, we have to help people buy things or deliver them ourselves. For example, right now I need to deliver an orthopedic prosthesis from the left bank to the right. That's the information I have for you. I wish everyone a good day and glory to Ukraine. A telephone poll, which can be found at DoRussiansWantWar.com, conducted by a group of independent research organizations in all regions of Russia, from the 28th of February to the 3rd of March, found that about 58% of Russians approved of the invasion of Ukraine, while only 23% opposed it. Simultaneously, the narrative it's not the Russians, it's Putin flooded the English language media. I did not choose Putin. None of my acquaintances chose Putin, some Russians say. Spreading this message creates the illusion that Putin is an only evil and that all Russians are his hostages. But such a position is far from reality. Нет больше любви, как если бы кто-то отдал душу свою за друзей своих. 
On the 18th of March 2014, Russia occupied the Ukrainian Crimea. On the 18th of March 2022, in Moscow, the Russian authorities organized a concert in honor of the anniversary of the illegal annexation of Crimea and in support of the war in Ukraine. About 90,000 ordinary Russian people came to the stadium to applaud Putin and the performers on the stage in support of the celebration. Thousands of artists performed at this concert in support of Russia's armed aggression in Ukraine. Since 2014, Ukraine has been confidently fighting the Kremlin's propaganda on our territory and the spread of Russian fakes around the world. However, we underestimated the strength of Russian propaganda inside their country. Relatives of Ukrainians in Russia trust their Kremlin media more than their sons, daughters and people they know. Alexandra moved from Mariupol to Kharkiv in 2014. Her family now lives in Russia. On the 24th of February, when the war began, Sasha received a call from her aunt. She called and asked how I was doing. I told her that the war had begun, that we packed our bags and maybe we'll, we'll go hide in, in the subway because the city had been bombed and, and we didn't know what would happen next. She answered to me, Sasha, don't worry, you don't need to pack any bags. Now, just in two days, the city will be cleared of the Nazis, important strategic military objects will be destroyed, and everything will be in order. Don't, you don't have to worry. A few days later, the bombs exploded in squares, residential buildings, zoos, universities, cafes, restaurants, shops, everywhere in our city. It's so terrifying. When we ran out of food, we went to the store. You leave the house and hope you will not die today. And with the sounds of an air alarm, you run, wait an hour and a half in the queue, buy groceries, and run home in fear. Sasha managed to evacuate from Kharkiv, all the while she couldn't help thinking about a telephone conversation with a relative. On the twelfth day of the war, Sasha decided to contact her aunt again. I called my aunt and said that we do not have our home anymore. We left Kharkiv. She advised me not to get upset, not to be upset that I lost my home, not to be upset that I sleep on the floor in a kindergarten in the village, not to be upset that I have no job, not to be upset that people are being killed. It hurts that they are your relatives. It hurts that there is no understanding. They must be stupid. I still cannot understand how they do not see, how they do not understand what is happening. The city of Mariupol has been under siege for several weeks. Mariupol City Council reports that Russian troops are forcing people to leave for Russia. Mariupol local authorities say the city is almost destroyed. A large part of the city of Kharkiv, not far from Russia, was also destroyed. My name is Nela. I'm from Kharkiv. The night from the 23rd to the 24th of February I spent at my sister's house. At 4.40 in the morning my mother called and told us to pack our stuff, documents and leave because the war had begun. We woke up in panic and all hell broke loose. I went outside to smoke and somewhere nearby a bomb dropped and the shelling began. We were on Rogain, this is the Proletarska subway station. We started to panic. I went into the apartment, all shaken. We didn't know what to do. I live in Merefe, actually. I called my boyfriend, asked him to pick us up. He came. It usually takes about an hour by car. He arrived three hours later because traffic was horrible. 
Everyone rushed to leave Kharkiv. We packed our stuff. My sister didn't want to come with us. We took my mother and went to Merefa. My sister was sitting all this time with her in-laws in the basement for 10 days. We tried to persuade them to leave, but they were afraid. It was really scary. A lot of my acquaintances right now are homeless. Merefa is not safe either. Russians started bombing. But there is nowhere to go. Fuck, and where would you go? All this shit starts happening in the western Ukraine too. It's everywhere. And I don't see the point of going somewhere and leaving my boyfriend here to, like, how can I, for example, go abroad without him, as many have done. Many went abroad with their husbands, those with kids. My relatives have moved to Norway on the second day of the war. They were driving through the fields. They left everything here, and they had an apartment, and a house, and cars. Their three kids are minors, that's why their husband crossed the border normally. Kharkiv is fucked up, of course. Almost everything was destroyed here. This is fucking horrible, I don't know where we would return later, where to work, what life will be like here because of this Putin, this fucking stinky bitch, damn it. It's hard on everyone who has lost a job. I'm unemployed now. Well, there is a little bit of savings, but damn, how to work? Under gunfire? And also, I mean, if you sleep in the house and you're afraid that something will drop on you, explosions wake you up constantly, you run to the cellar all the time, and it's so cold there now. The windows in my best friend's house are shattered. It's trash, damn it. This is also another gang where we were. I have a friend who lives in Saltivka. Her dad went to see his friend in the garage. The missile hit the garage. There was nothing left of them. Everything is rubble. And they say they do not shoot at civilians, don't shoot at houses, don't shoot at schools. I know many people hiding in schools. Thank God they didn't touch those schools and the kids are hiding there also. Where to run? I don't know how this is possible. In our world, in the 21st century, this comeback has no brains, and people abroad do not understand what is happening. How can they help? Yes, they met refugees at the borders, but many of us cannot leave. Yes, they met refugees at the borders, but many of us cannot leave. More than 220 companies have left Russia due to its invasion of Ukraine, rapidly increasing in number each and every day. The purpose of this step is not to upset ordinary Russians, to deprive them of the opportunity to buy a pillow from IKEA or have a snack at McDonald's. The goal is to stop funding bloody Russia's military machine. Fighting continues in eastern Ukraine. Rubizhne, Avdiivka and Severodonetsk are shelled every day. Part of the settlements in the south and north of the country are occupied. Since the start of the full-scale invasion, the Russian military has shelled 135 hospitals and completely destroyed nine, as Health Minister of Ukraine Viktor Leshko said. Ukraine continues to fight, because the truth is on our side. The whole civilized world supports us. Thousands gathered at the Brandenburg Gate in Berlin to support Ukraine and call for an end to the war. Yeah!